This is my first video on Flutter. I'm a lot more excited to talk about Flutter than React Native because it's something new, something fresh. Um, and I like what Google is doing with Flutter a lot. So let's get started with the install process. It works on both Windows and Mac. I'm using a Mac, so I'm going to go to Mac here. First, you would need to download the SDK here in the zip file. And it walks you through the process here a bit. The important things to note is that once you download it to a, a certain location, you'll need to um, export it to your path, to your environment path using this line here. Make sure that your path is to make sure that it's added to your batch file correctly. And there's some other things that you can do here too. Flutter Doctor is a command that you should use a lot if you want to make sure that your configuration is correct. For example, um, you need the Android SDK to run Flutter on Android. And if you don't have it, this will let you know, like this command will let you know that you don't have it installed or it's not set up correctly. Running on iOS, uh, there's not really much difference. This document here kind of walks you through things like setting up the simulator via the command line and creating your first app with Flutter Create. So create is the keyword here that you need to use, Flutter Create, and then your app name here. So let's go to a, actually let's go to this iTerm here. And first we'll do the export to your Flutter SDK path here and then do your source batch profile. And now if you run like Flutter, let's do Flutter Doctor, this will actually run the process. It's kind of like a diagnostic tool to make sure that things are looking okay in your Flutter setup. As you can see, I have an issue in my iOS toolchain here. That's not really a big deal for this tutorial here, so I'm going to ignore that for now. So if we want to create a new Flutter app, we do Flutter create and then your app name here. So something to note here is that it uses Objective-C and Java by default on iOS and Android. But if you want to use Swift and Kotlin, then you need to specify that in the setup here. So the actual commands for that would be minus I and minus A. Minus I tells it that on iOS, you want to use Swift. On Android, you want to use Kotlin. And then you give it the app name here. So I already have an app called Test1. So if you press return, it'll walk you through the process of setting it up. It's really easy. So if I go to my VS Code here, <coughs> sorry. If I go to my VS Code here, I have Test1 already um, created here. I haven't changed anything yet. And let's see. If I want to actually run it, then you would type in flutter run. So I have, I've already ran it here in my, actually I have not. So let's actually do that right now. So we have two devices here. Let's see what happens if we do Flutter run. So it tells us that we have more than one device connected. So it wants us to specify which device and it tells us how to do that here. But what I'd like to do instead is I like to just do Flutter run minus D all. That tells Flutter to just run it on all devices that you can see. So whether it's two or 10 devices, it'll run it on all. Not at the same time, but it'll run on one first and then the other and then the other. So, so first here it's running on Android. Let's go to the emulator here. And this is actually the app here. So this app is just a standard counter app that is created every time you run Flutter Create. It keeps track of the state here as you press the button. Nothing too fancy, but it's a very good demo app to get you familiar with 
widgets, like stateless widgets and stateful widgets. And here it is on iOS. So same thing. So in VS Code here, it tells you that if you want to reload changes, R is a hot reload. So if you have any UI changes, just run R and you'll see them. If you want to actually restart the entire app, do uh, Shift R. So with VS Code, to actually get Flutter running correctly, you need to install the Flutter plugin here. Um, it's very good. I don't see anything different in VS Code versus Android for the Flutter plugin here. So Flutter is supported very well by Google and VS Code. And there's another plugin called Awesome Flutter, which is a an awesome plugin to actually uh, create snippets of code by just typing in a few letters. So for example, if you're in uh, your widget here and you want to have a build function, you could type build, and the snippet here will actually create the entire build function for you, which is very handy. And as you learn more Flutter, you'll start to use those more and you'll become faster and faster. So let's talk about the pubspec file here. This file is actually very important. This is where all your dependencies will go. So if you wanted to add something like Firebase, you would put it here under this section here. So we'll be using this more later in other videos. Let's see, let's go to Android and in Android, to start a new Flutter project, you actually don't need to use the command line if you don't want to. You can just do start a new Flutter project, and you have different options here. So whether you're trying to write a new Flutter application, a plugin, a package, or a new module. Very easy with Android Studio, but I still prefer VS Code. I like the look of VS Code more. Yeah. So that's pretty much all there is to Setting up Flutter on Android and iOS, it's very simple, very straightforward. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments. If you have any uh, videos that you want to see me do, if you have any topics that you want to see me cover, please write them in the comments and subscribe for more videos on Flutter and React Native. So have a good day. Bye.